نحمده ونصلي على رسول النبي الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إحدنا السراط المستقيم سراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين قال الله تعالى في شان حبيبي إن الله وملائكته يسلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا سلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم بارك على سيدنا ولا على محمد طب القلوب ودوائها وعافية الأبدان وشفائها ونور الأبصار وديائها وعلى آله وصحبه دائما أبدا صلاة وسلام عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله Continuing the talk on Imam Hussain al-Islam in Garbala. Uh, you know, as we mentioned last week, we were talking about, you know, when the family finally starts coming out and fighting against the forces of Yazid. Uh, and so, again, you know, you have a handful versus thousands. And so we talked about Imam Qasim, who is the son of Imam Hassan. And when he came out and how he fought bravely, but then eventually what's one man going to do against thousands? And especially when those thousands come after him, you know, not one by one, but all together. And so Imam Hussein al-Islam, he goes out and he picks up the, the body of his nephew. And he holds him and the way he carries him is that he's holding... Uh, with one arm his chest, or he's holding his chest against his own chest and the other arms around his waist and as he's walking back to the camp, uh, you know, the feet of Imam Qasim are dragging along the ground. And then he brings him to the tent and then he lays him down. And he does this with every single one of them, one by one. And as he does this, when he comes back, he also advises the women in the tent for, for patience and everybody else for patience as well. You know, again, وَبَشِّرِ you الصَّابِرِينَ وَلَنَبْلُ عَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجِوَةِ وَنَقْسٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنْفِسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ You know, that we will truly or surely test you with something of hunger or fear, hunger, loss of wealth, loss of your lives and the loss of your or, or with your offspring Thamarat here the fruits of your toils which is your offspring and so after this now Muhammad and Aun the sons of Bibi Zainab the sister of Imam Hussain al-Islam so the nephews of Imam Hussain al-Islam the father is Abdullah ibn Ja'far. So the grandfather is Ja'far al-Tayyar, radiallahu anhu. And so these two come out and they ask, they, they say, give us permission that we also go and sacrifice ourselves for your sake. And so Imam Hussain al-Islam, he says that I did not bring you here for this. So go back to your tent and to your mother. And from inside the voice, comes of Bibi Zainab, and this is the daughter of, of the leader of the women of Jannah. The granddaughter of Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Bibi Zainab, and she says that, that, oh my brother, do not reject this gift of mine from, from me. And if I had hundreds of sons, I would sacrifice them all for you. You know, if you look at the attitude of the true believers, you know, they understand that this life, this is not my life. You know, like here these days, oh, you know, this is my life. I do what I want to. This is, you know, you know, this is mine. Nothing is mine. 
That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-warith. He is the inheritor of everything. Everything goes back to him. And even this life, it's not my life, this is a trust from Allah. That I do with it what he wishes for me to do. You know, even when we look back at the time of Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, in the Battle of Badr, uh, in the Battle of Uhud, how many were martyred? You know, Seventy of the believers martyred. And yet the mothers of the, of, of the sons that were martyred in that battle would say what? That if I had more sons, I would sacrifice them as well. And so now here Imam Hussein al-Islam, he also gives them permission to go. And the same thing. You know, when they go, each one when they go, they, they remind the, their opponents or the enemy as to who they are. But everything falls on deaf ears. So these two again, what are two going to do against thousands? And so they also are martyred. And the same scene that Imam Hussein al Islam he goes out and he picks each one up and he brings them back to the tent and he lays them there outside of the tent. And he advises or nasiya to all to everyone to be patient. So now the only ones that are left, as far as the men that are left is of course Imam Hussein alayhi salam, his brother Abbas, his th and his three sons, Ali Akbar, Ali Ausat, and Ali Asghar. They haven't drank anything for three days. You remember if on the, on the eve of the seventh, you know, Yazid or Ibn Ziyad. Of course, everything Ibn Ziyad is doing is under the command of Yazid. So people who try to say, oh, you know, this wasn't Yazid's doing. He's the leader who has given this order to stop Hussein at any cost. So they had placed 4,000 men up along the Euphrates. You know, again, Falsehood understands the strength of truth. Why do you need to place 4,000 men to stop 72 from trying to get some water? The other aspect of this is if we look at the Sunnah of Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In the Battle of Badr, if you remember, he initially stopped the army early. And then one of the companions said, Ya Rasulullah you know, would it be better if we moved forward and took hold of all of the wells? And so now Rasulullah he moves forward and he controls all of the wells. So the Quraysh, when they came, they had no water. They had no access to water. Yet when they came to Rasulullah so and asked for water, he allowed them to get water. Because he's rahmatul alameen. And yet the enemies of Allah and his messenger, وسلم, who know no bounds, they stop these men, women, and children from getting any water. And so, you know, Ali Aswar is crying. He's six months old. There's nothing to eat or drink. The daughter of Imam Hussein al-Islam, Bibi Sukaina, 
also thirsty. Everyone is thirsty, but the child, for the children it's harder. And so she asked her uncle, Abbas, he says, Can you, is there any way to get any water? And so he eventually he goes out. He's stopped by the forces of Yazid. He again reminds them who they are and what they're doing. He eventually breaks through their forces, is able to fill a little bit of water in, in a uh, leather water bag. But on his way back, you know, eventually surrounded by the forces of Yazid and they cut his arms. You know, he's holding the water in one arm, they cut that one, he holds it in the other, they cut that one. He tries to grab it in his, in his, between his teeth and they chop his head off. He is, of course, the flag bearer of Imam Hussein a.s. And now when Imam Hussein a.s. comes out to get him, you know, you can, or rather we can't imagine the emotions. You know, we read this, we hear about this, and it's just, you know, something in the past. We don't actually live it. Because our hearts are devoid of love. You know, when, when Jibreel -Salam, came with the angel of rain and he talked to Rasulullah -Salam, about this, you know, and the hadiths are saying, even Nasiruddin al Bani says that they are saying, And Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi he's crying. And when they asked him, Ya Rasulullah, he says, I cannot help this. You know, the tears are flowing. And he says, I can't help this. Just listening to what will happen to Imam Hussein Islam in the future. And yet we know what happened and we still, nothing happens to us. But the same thing, you know, he picks up his brother, brings him back to the tent, lays him down. And now at this point, Ali Akbar, the older son of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. And all three of his sons were named Ali, after their grandfather. You know, Ali Akbar is in you know, the prime of his youth. So now he comes to his father and he says, give me permission to go. And eventually, he gives him permission. And he rides out and he also challenges, again, reminds them. So this way on the Day of Judgment they have no excuse, that we didn't know who they were. And as he's riding out, he says that I am Ali, the son of Hussein, the son of the uh, son of Ali, and we are the family of Rasulullah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So he challenges them. You know, fight me. Somebody come out, somebody who you think is, is great, come out and fight me. So there's one among them whose name was Tariq. And again, all of these, none of these are named John or Jim or Antonio or any other name that was famous then of the non-Muslims. All of them claim to say, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. All of them in their salat, they say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. And yet they come against who? They come against the blood of Rasulullah. <laughs> Sallallahu 
this is why if you go to a true Sunni gathering, there are three slogans. that you'll hear. First you say, Takbir. And everybody says, Allahu Akbar. All that tells you is that, oh, these people claim to believe in Allah. Even the Jews of the time, the Jews in Arabia used to say, Allahu Akbar. Even the Christians in Arabia used to say, Allahu Akbar. That's, that's all that tells you. The other slogan is the slogan of the Risala. Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Hmm? So now you know, okay, he, 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 he says he's Muslim. And later we'll talk about who gave us this slogan. Which is the slogan of... Actually, I'll mention it now. So you have the slogan of... Ya Rasulullah, who gave this to us? As a gift to the Ummah of Rasulullah. It was given to us by Abu Bakr Siddiq. Radiallahu anh. The Battle of Yamama. which was against the forces of Muselma. You know, the liar, who claimed to be a prophet. So now the army is leaving. Abu Bakr he gathers an army of 13,000 men, all of whom are companions of Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The flag bearer or the commander of this army is Khalid bin Walid, radiallahu anhu. But now the question comes as the army is leaving. They say what? They say, Ya Khalifatul Rasul. You know, the title of Amir al Mu'mineen didn't come until Umar. Radiallahu. So, Ya Khalifatul Rasul. We are going to fight an army who looks like us. We're going to fight a people who look like us, who speak like us, who dress like us. Who make adhan like us and who make iqama like us. So how will we know who is who? You know, before in the wars of Rida, you know, when uh, Arabia apostated after the, the wafat of Rasulullah and Abu Bakr had to send the armies out, the initial order was that you go and you wait and if you hear the call to adhan, don't attack. Musalma didn't change the adhan. He didn't change the yaqama. He didn't even change the salat. The only thing for salat, he said that Fajr and Zuhr and, and Isha are hard on you, so you don't have to make those two. He didn't deny the risala of Rasulullah sallam. He said, oh, he is the prophet of, of Hijaz, I am the prophet of Najd. So this is what the companions are asking. So we're going to fight an enemy that resembles us, so how do we know who is who? It was the practice of Rasulullah that when he would send the army out, he would give them a code word. The slogan was always Allahu Akbar, Takbir Allahu Akbar. But the code words changed depending on who they were fighting. In the Battle of Badr, the code word was Ahad. Because they were fighting against the Mushrikeen. So this is a term that they hated. So now you come before somebody and you're not sure who he is. He might, he might be wearing armor. You can't see his face. You don't know who he is. So how do you know this enemy or, or, or friend? So in Badr, they would say, Ahad. If the other side were reciprocated by saying, Ahad, you know. This is, this, is a, this is one of ours. If he did not, then you also knew who he was. So even Ibn Kathir mentions this in Al-Badaya when, when Abu Bakr was asked how will we distinguish between friend and foe, he told them that the Sha'ar, the code word for this battle will be 
Ya Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this isn't simply ijma sari. You know, you have different types of ijma. Ijma sari is where everyone uh, says, yes, I accept this verbally. And to deny that type of ijma is kufr. This is more than that because they didn't simply accept this verbally, they put it into practice. So as they're coming for this battle, they're traveling from Medina all the way to Yamama, which is north of modern day Riyadh, slightly north of modern day Riyadh. They meet somebody, they don't know who he is, they say, Ya Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If that person didn't like this term, then they knew who he was. And then in the middle of the battle, because if you, if you read about this battle, the companions, they said that this was the most difficult battle they had ever fought to that point. 700 Huffaz were martyred in this battle. Many others were also martyred in this battle. Khalid bin Walid is the flag bearer of this army. There's no doubt who he is. Yet when he sees this condition on the battlefield, he goes to a nearby mountain and he calls out to Rasulullah and says, Ya Muhammad. He refers to his wasila. And what happens? When he comes back, the whole condition of the battlefield changes because now Wahshi has killed Muslim. Wahshi radiallahu anhu. With the same spear that he killed Hamza radio, he kills now Wahsh, Wah, he kills Muslim. And he said later on, he said that before my Islam, I killed the best of men. And after my Islam, I have killed the worst of men. So this slogan, Ya Rasulullah, is given to us by who? By Abu Bakr. So now we distinguish, okay, who is a, who is a Muslim and who is not? So people who have issues with this slogan, you know which category they fall into, according to the, the, the ruling of Abu Bakr Siddiq. Okay. But the thing is, you know, he may say the kalma, but you don't know if he's a hypocrite or not. And for this, Rasulullah told us the criteria. He said what? About Ali. He said that only a believer will love you and only a hypocrite will have animosity against you. In another narration, he says that anyone who has animosity against Ali is not free from one of three things. Either his birth is illegitimate or he is a conception of, of, of uh, uh, impurity or he is a hypocrite. And you know, and like Ibn Abbas and, and various other companions, they said that during the time of Rasulullah revelation would come, we would know who's hypocrite and who's not. And now all we do is we take the name of Ali, and by their faces we know. You, know, you start praising Ali, and then you, st you see the faces change. You know who's who then. Those faces that light up, you know these are believers. And those who don't, you know, who start having issues, oh, why are you praising Ali? Then you know who, where they fall. And so this is the third slogan of Nara Hadri, Ya Ali. So now, when he brings them back, his nephews, the sons of his sister. He lays them down and now his, his son asks for permission. After his brother Abbas has been martyred. So, what happens? Is eventually he gives him permission and he rides out. And when he calls out one of their great fighters, whose name is Tariq, he comes out and they start fighting. And he, you know, this is, 
This is the blood of the conqueror of Khaybar running through his veins. So when he kills Tariq, the two sons of Tariq who are also in the army, they come rushing out after him. And he kills both of them. And then he comes, and, and after this he comes riding back. And he comes to his father and he says that, you know, the thirst has, has just made me very restless. And if I just had a small bowl of water to drink, then I could deal with the whole army. So Imam Hussein al-Islam, he says to him, he says that when I was young, and I would be thirsty, the Rasulullah would, would allow me, or would have me suckle his tongue. You know, many times. I mean, the first, the first sustenance that Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein al-Islam received in this world was the blessed saliva of Rasulullah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And you can imagine, or rather we can't imagine what all that transferred into them. When Abu Huraira was on his deathbed, and Marwan ibn Hakam, who was the governor at that time of Medina, you know, a hypocrite, who came to him and he says that he comes to him while Abu Huraira is about to pass. He says that we have loved everything about you. We have loved everything about you except your, your love for Hassan and Hussein. And Abu Huraira, he sits up. You know, a man who's so weak, he can't even sit up. Now he sits up after hearing this. And he says that we were on an expedition with the, with the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And his daughter accompanied us on this. And on our way back, we all ran out of water. And we heard crying coming from the Hawdaj of Bibi Fatima. Salam alayha. And the Rasulullah he stopped the army and he, he goes to his daughter and he says, Why are my sons crying? This is why the companions that you refer to Hassan and Hussein is Ibn Rasulullah. Why are my sons crying? And she said, Ya Rasulullah, they are thirsty and there's nothing to drink. So Rasulullah he tells the companions, he says, who has any water? And Abu Huraira says that all of us were hoping that one of us would have, that we would have, be, to be the one that had the water to offer it to Rasulullah. But no one had anything. And so Rasulullah he, he tells his daughter, he says, give me my son. And Abu Huraira rather, he says that we see the blessed hands of Bibi Fatima come out and hand Rasulullah Imam Hassan alayhi salam. And Rasulullah he places his tongue in the mouth of, of, of Hassan until Imam Hassan al he suckles his tongue until he's satisfied. And then he hands him back and then he says, give me my other son. And, she, and then we see her bring out Imam Hussain al -Islam. And the same thing. He allows him to suckle until he is satisfied. And then Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, he says to Marwan bin Hakam, he says, how can, I, how can we not love those like this? And so when Imam Hussain al-Islam, he places his tongue out and, and his son Ali Akbar, he suckles on his tongue. And from that he gets some relief in his restlessness. But then he says that your tongue is drier than my tongue. Then he rides back out. And, you know, the army of Yazid, they, when they saw him kill these three, now they say, oh, we can't go against him one-on-one, -on -one, even in, under these conditions. So they all jump on him. And eventually he is pierced by a spear. And he also falls. And now again, Imam Hussein al-Islam, he, he comes out, picking up his son. bringing him back to the tents and laying him beside everyone else. And instructing everyone to be patient.
you know, our, our disconnection with them is so strong that we don't even know them. We don't even know their names, much less what they did. And all of this isn't for themselves, but this is all so that Islam reaches us to give life back to the tree of Islam. And yet we're so ungrateful. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not love the ungrateful. Time's up. May he will continue from here next week, inshallah. May he, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fill our hearts with his true love. The true love of his beloved Prophet Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family, his companions, and all of those whom they love, inshallah. Those who have not made sunnah, go 